Liberals are big mad because Biden just announced he will not be forgiving student loan debt. Court filings revealed that Facebook admitted that their fact checks are nothing more than opinion. Kamala Harris issues a dire warning that women will die if they don't have the option to murder their innocent babies in the womb. And what the hell is going on in our schools? Welcome back to another episode of Rapid Fire. My name is Savannah Hernandez, your host for this episode. Thank you so much for tuning in. Now, Christmas is coming up soon, my friends. And I want to ask my viewers and listeners for one thing this Christmas. I would love nothing more than to hit 300 reviews on the podcast by Christmas. So please help me out by going to Apple Podcasts and leaving a five-star review. If you do like the show, the link is down below. Or if you're a podcast listener and you have not left a review yet, please help me to reach 300 reviews by Christmas time and leave that five-star review. Also, remember to follow me on Locals at savsays.locals.com and my website, savsaysofficial.com, so you can always find all of my content, some of which has been banned or censored from this platform. And always, you know, a way to keep in touch with me, go and add your email into my website so I always have it on a list. That way, in case anything happens, I can let you guys know what is going on. Now, I mentioned Christmas. It's next week, which is kind of crazy to me. It came up so quickly. I wasn't expecting it. And in light of the Christmas season, there have been a lot of Christmas-themed TikToks going around. And I saw this one, and I just had to show it to you guys. If I had to see it, so do you. This liberal Christmas TikTok. Enjoy. it up over your nose where the anti-maskers listen and there's no political division okay i'm sorry i was not ready for that second girl to come in like that her voice was atrocious girl sounded like she swallowed glass before she tried to uh sing that and put your mask above your nose Woo! that was a lot to deal with that was a lot to listen to i am so sorry that i just did that to you guys but also that was kind of hilarious <laughs> i kind of want to listen to it again that was really really cringy let's listen to it one more time that was bad it up over your no- okay i'm sorry guys there's not many things that genuinely make me laugh in life but that was definitely one of them uh top 10 that was amazing the second lady definitely just takes the cake when she comes in somebody please introduce that woman to auto-tune Outside of this being the most cringy Christmas theme song, trying to attack anti-maskers who have the audacity to breathe raw, fresh air with their bare faces. Uh, Despite the cringe on that entire factor of this video, that second woman just came in hot and that was just the worst thing I've ever heard in my life. Anyways, anyways, in light of the Christmas spirit, I just had to share that with you guys. Let's get into the actual news that is going on today because there is quite a bit, starting off with Joe Biden not extending student loan relief and also confirming that student loan payments will restart in February. This comes from Forbes. And it's absolutely hilarious to me because if you guys recall, when Joe Biden was running for president, when he was trying to beat out all of his competitors, when he was trying to run against Donald Trump, one of the platforms that he ran on was abolishing up to $10,000 worth of student loan debt, trying to, you know, help people pay off student loan debt by potentially abolishing it or, again, extending student loan relief. And now, of course... As with every other promise Joe Biden has made, he is not going to be keeping it. And as this Forbes article reads, Biden won't be extending student loan relief and confirm student loan payments restart February 1st. Now, a lot of liberals were big mad about this. They were extremely upset. And we've seen many members of Congress as well come forward in the past couple of weeks and talk about why we need to abolish student loan debt. Like people like AOC, for example. Now, AOC tweeted this out. I'm 32 years old now. The congresswoman said, I have over $17,000 in student loan debt. This is unacceptable. So 
she goes on this video and she says this, and I just want to do some quick math here for you guys. So let's say, for example, that AOC got out of school. You know what? I'm not going to do the quick math with AOC. There's another story that I'm going to do this quick math with so I can show you guys how possible it is to pay off your student loan debt. But this is AOC, okay? She and Rashida Tlaib, as well as another one who has uh, come forward and said, oh no, like my student loan debt is just so much and it's just so hard to pay off. This is the uh, clip from Rashida Tlaib from The Hill. She's quoted saying, I worked full time Monday through Friday and took weekend classes to get my law degree and still close to $200,000 in debt. And I still over 70,000 and most of it was interest. And of course, she is there in front of Congress trying to advocate for canceling student loan debt. Now, Joe Biden said he's not going to be doing that. And um, Congresswoman Cori Bush had this to say when that announcement was made. She said, a note to Democrats who blame progressives after losing an election, forcing millions to start paying student loans again and cutting off the child tax credit at the start of an election year is not a winning strategy. We're warning you now, don't point fingers in November. And why did Cori Bush tweet this out? Because they already know that Democrats are not headed down a good path. We looked to Virginia and that race for governor as what we were going to potentially see for 2022. We saw that Glenn Youngkin won Virginia and that state is now very red. A lot of parents pushed back. They went out and they voted for a new governor because they were they were tired of the radical progressives that were continually ruining their state and targeting their children. So that was one aspect of it. But of course, Cori Bush comes forward and says it's because we're forcing millions to start paying off their own student loan debt. Now, Joe Biden is smart and he understands, and I wouldn't even say Joe Biden is smart in this, uh, but whoever made this decision in his administration was smart enough to realize that the majority of Americans, specifically those that have paid off their student loan debt, would not have a good time paying off the student loan debt, the hundreds of thousands of dollars accumulated by people who got PhDs that they're not using, gender studies degrees, social studies degrees that they're not using, who racked up hundreds and thousands of dollars going to their dream school when they didn't have to do that. They could have gone to a community college to maybe get some of those core classes, cut down on some of that debt. They could have gone to a smaller university as opposed to going to a bigger name brand university, have gotten the same degree and most likely ended up with the same job. But of course, in our society today, it's very much how can I depend on the government? How can the government save me from my bad decisions? Now, I tweeted this out as soon as I saw this story. I said, I don't have any sympathy for anybody who racked up over $100,000 worth of student loan debt for their degree. Because you should as an adult, you made that decision, understand how interest works, understand that you have the ability to refinance your loans, the internet exists, so educate yourself and pay off your debt. It's something that anybody can do. People like Robert Kiyosaki or Dave Ramsey, who are financial advisors who have so much free information on YouTube and their websites to help people in need, because there is a big need for financial literacy in this country. Those people exist. The internet exists. So there's absolutely zero excuse for people to be crying about their student loan debt. Now, Insider came out with this article to really try to sympathize with some of these people who have this massive amount of student loan debt. This headline reads, meet an independent voter with $163,000 in student debt who left the Democrat Party after four decades because she felt betrayed by Joe Biden. I really felt he was going to help us with the student loan problem. And then uh, this is a nice pretty picture of said woman who has $163,000 of student debt that she could have been paying off for the past 40 years, but I guess decided not to. Her name's Melissa Andretta. She's 53. She was a registered Democrat for four decades and voted for Joe Biden. She said she felt betrayed by Democrats because of inaction on student debt and is now an independent. With $163,000 in student debt, she says she's worried about loan payments resuming next year. Now, my favorite part of this is that second line there. She felt betrayed by Democrats because of their inaction on student debt. Ma'am, You've had 40 decades to pay off this student loan debt, and I just want us to do a, a, some quick math here. So let's take 163,000, okay? That's a pretty big number. And then let's divide that by 40 years, okay? So this woman could have been paying off her debt over 40 years. That's $4,075 a year. 
Okay, $4,000 a year. That's really not that much. Now let's divide that even further into 12 months because we all know that there's 12 months in a year. You guys follow me on this one? So that adds up to about $340 a month. Now the average person gets paid bi-weekly. So let's divide this even further by another two. That's $170 every payday that she could have been sending to her student loan debt over the course of the last 40 years, and it would have been paid off. You're telling me that this woman did not have $170 over the course of the past 40 years to pay off her own student loan debt. Yeah, I have no sympathy for these people because that is basic math. And as somebody who was making 35 grand a year and paid off 20 plus grand in student loan debt in less than two years, I have no sympathy for these types of people who made their own bad decisions, got themselves into this own their own situation, did not have the education or ability, not even education at that point, just the common sense to look up what refinancing one's loans might be. Because in many of these articles and many of these stories, we're hearing, oh, well, I'm paying triple the amount that I originally borrowed because of my interest rate. Well, guess what? There's something called refinancing your loans. That's where you get a new company to pay the old company you borrowed from. They pay off your loan debt, right? And then you end up paying the new company that you've refinanced with your original debt at a lower interest rate. That's what refinancing is. is I refinanced my student loans. That is an option available to anyone. Also, many of the people who took out these student loan debts, you have to go through like videos and courses and understand what you're doing before you sign your life away to hundreds of thousands of dollars of debt. So I have zero sympathy for these people. These are grown ass adults who don't want to take responsibility for their own actions because we can clearly see this woman again, in debt, $163,000 for 40 years. It's absolutely freaking ridiculous. And there's no excuse for it. Again, I just did simple math, $170 every two weeks. And she could have paid this off in the 40 years that she's allowed it to accumulate and gain interest. Now let's take another peek at people like this woman, Melissa, who just don't want to pay off their student loan debts because it's just too hard. They made a bad decision and they don't want to have to pay for it now. Cordero Woodford says, Biden, I just got an email about my student loans. They're telling me the payment pause on student loans ends at the end of January. I'm going to have them email and call you because something must be wrong. I swear you told us you were canceling student loan debt. And then you go back into this man's Twitter and it says, we getting ready to land in Hawaii. I'm so excited for this vacation. I apologize in advance for all the pictures I will be posting of my girl and I. And that was... um. Something that he posted two days ago. So he posted the student loan debt at the beginning, this tweet that I just read about the loan debt at the beginning of December. And then just five days later on the 11th, because he originally posted that first one on the 6th, he's posting that he's ready, getting ready to go to Hawaii with his girl. So uh, another example of how you can reallocate funds in your life, uh, for example, AOC, if you're still $17,000 in debt, maybe you should have paid off that debt before buying your shiny new Tesla or moving into that expensive DC apartment. Yeah, I don't know. Just a thought there. Pretty sure AOC makes 175 k per year. So there's zero excuse for why she cannot pay that off in one year, to be quite honest with you guys. Just another example of how we are enabling people not to take responsibility for their own actions and how we have produced an entire generation that feels entitled, so entitled that they expect somebody else to pay off their debts and their mistakes. That's the millennial generation and it's disgusting. You made that decision. Now you pay the consequences. You can pay off your debt. That's a very feasible thing to do. Just like I did the math for Melissa, 163,000 seems like a big number. But again, over the course of 40 years, that would have been a $170 payment every single payday. Now, how did we get an entire generation like this that thinks that the government should be paying for their student loan debt? that the government should be paying them not to go back to work, that the government should be giving them free health care and free everything because health care is a human right, food is a human right, shelter is a human right, so I shouldn't have to pay rent. I shouldn't have to go to the store and buy food for myself. The government should just provide it for me because it's a human right. How have we gotten to a period of time where that is the average millennial or maybe even potential Zoomer coming up? 
Well, we look to our education system for that one, because instead of teaching our children about what interest rates are, what how to properly use credit cards or what credit even is, how to deal with taxes, what taxes even are, or how to maybe refinance a student loan before going to college. Instead, we have teachers indoctrinating our students with LGBTQ BS. Let's go ahead and take a peek at a couple of recent headlines. This is from Alpha News. Report, Minnesota teacher tells student about her threesomes, furry fetish, and more. A Minnesota teacher reportedly tells students details about her three-way sexual relationship and how she identifies as a furry, which is a person who derives pleasure from dressing up as an animal. So look to the schools for an example of why our kids are turning out the way that they are. And let's go ahead and get into this article a little bit more because it's not just this teacher bragging to her students about being a furry and having threesomes with her husband and another woman. She also speaks positively about incest and assigns pornographic material as coursework. Uh, so apparently, like this is some of the coursework that she's assigning her students. Um let me see here. The first piece titled Lore is a deeply disturbing firsthand account from a three-year-old girl as she is molested by her 79-year-old grandfather. The other is titled Lisp, recalls the human experience of a homosexual boy reconciling his sexuality with the world around him. And I'm not going to read from this curriculum because it's talking about sucking male genitalia genitalia. I don't even like saying those words. That's why I mispronounce them because I don't say them often because they gross me out. So that's one example. Another example, uh, let me pull it up here on Twitter. <laughs> oh, it's since been deleted. Now I had to go and that's why the show's a little bit late tonight because I had to go and find this video because it's since been deleted from Twitter. And what is that video? It's a video of a Philadelphia teacher coming out to her students as a lesbian because that's the curriculum your kids are being taught in public schools now. Let's watch. It was National Coming Out Day yesterday. If we were here in person, I would have done this yesterday. My name's Miss Watsy. I'm, and I'm here. <laughs> yeah. I'm so proud of you. Thank you. My name is Miss Watsi, and I am. I'm Miss Watsi, and I am. So I wanted to inform you I am coming out as a lesbian today. Oh my God! Congratulations! You like women, nobody cares, and there's no place for that shit in the classroom. There really isn't. Watching this video, it's not brave, it's not amazing, it's not, yay, great job, we're so proud of you. No, this is disgusting. This teacher should not be talking about her sexuality with her students. Now imagine if a male teacher, let's imagine if a white male teacher was like, I just want to let you guys know that I'm straight and I had sex with my wife last night. What would happen to that teacher for, you know, talking about his normal lifestyle? He would be condemned. He would be told that he's disgusting and that he shouldn't be subjecting his students to any part of his lifestyle that has to do with sexuality or that sexual in any nature because that has no place in the classroom. But for some reason, when we have this weird, frail lesbian teacher who talks like this, who needs affirmation from children, disgusting, it's something that's brave and beautiful. No, it's not. It's weird and it should not be praised. It should be condemned. Now, it's not just... In Minnesota, it's not just in Philadelphia this is happening. We also have this teacher. I'm not sure which state this is in, actually, uh, but it is from Libs of TikTok. It's a picture of this pink-haired, queer, he, she, whatever the hell this is, teacher. And it's a screenshot of its TikTok, hashtag non-binary teacher. And it reads, when I hear a student casually gender me correctly, and it shows this teacher smirking, giving a nice little smirk because they're super happy that they're able to confuse their kids. We've seen so many teachers as well come out and say, I teach my four-year-old class, you know, a classroom 
what do they call it? Students. There we go. I teach my four-year-old students about my gender and my sexuality so that they can be inclusive and progressive. Yeah, we're, we're literally indoctrinating the next generation as we speak, which is why we have all of these psychopathic adults who think that if you hurt their feelings, you deserve to be canceled and fired from your job. That gets so much worse. From Libs of TikTok, again, we have this little excerpt here, this little story time from another a teacher, she's a guest speaker at this point, I'm assuming this is a she, says, I just retired in June. Yay. And yesterday was my first time back in my old classroom as a guest speaker. I taught health and went in to talk about self-esteem and stress management. OMG. I was so filled with anxiety and it was hard to talk to them about managing stress of the 12 to 15 students in the class. Maybe half had their masks on properly during the entire class. Many had to be reminded to put them on as they entered the room, even though they already should have been on. Many in the room, even after being reminded, had them down below their nose. I finally said, you're going to have to put your mask on properly or leave, or I will. This experience made me extremely aware of the constant daily anxiety that many teachers are experiencing on a daily basis right now. I don't know how y'all are doing it, but I'd like to buy you all a drink. So my favorite part of this is the end. <clears throat> So this teacher's so worried about COVID, right, that um, she's offering other teachers to buy them alcohol, which is something that lowers your immune system, by the way. It's not good for you. It's not good for your health. So if this teacher really was so concerned about their health, then they wouldn't be, you know, drinking alcohol. They'd probably be exercising. And more importantly, they wouldn't be stressed out because being stressed also lowers your immunity. But these are adults in the modern day. Um, these kids weren't wearing their face masks. And it just filled me up with so much anxiety. I'm like, I just, I almost couldn't do it. I was filled with so much stress. And I just have so much respect for teachers who go and do their jobs surrounded by these kids who have masks on below their nose. This is our World War Three, guys. This is our, this is our World War Three. It's just so hard. It's, this is our Vietnam. This is, this is our 9-11. It's so hard. That's your average teacher nowadays. So, oh gosh, just spare me. It's all so exhausting. It's all so tiresome. And imagine living with this type of mentality too. Imagine being that willingly stupid and stressed out for no reason every single day. I certainly couldn't do it. But we have teachers out here in these streets who are genuinely afraid of young people who are the least at risk for COVID, not wearing their masks properly. Because again, we, we live in a very selfish culture, by the way, where it's the teachers who are like, you need to worry about my health. You need to make sure you're protecting me. Hi, yeah, yeah. We're going to move on from this because I will continue to get mad and say bad words. And God says, no, let's move on. Now, again, we're seeing this new, beautiful, not mentally ill generation of people who can't even handle going into a classroom to talk about mental health because they themselves are filled with so much anxiety and stress. Again, you know, this is just the libs of TikTok talk episode. Uh, we see this as well. So from a developer's article, Android Developer Relations is hiring. And then if you go into this article for Android Dev Dev DevRel, Android DevRel, that's an interesting name. It says, if you're from an underrepresented group in tech, please ap apply even if you don't think you meet all of the requirements and read what we're doing to build a more diverse and inclusive Google. Okay, so this is Google. That makes a lot of sense there. So there you guys go. In our modern age, and that's why everything is so crap nowadays, because people don't have to be hired for certain positions or certain roles because they have the qualifications to fill said role. It's just like, oh, if you're black or brown or a woman, like, yeah, totally come and take that role. Like, if you want to be a rocket scientist, but you don't know how to, sh like, build a rocket, like, that's totally okay. You just have to be trans. It's totally fine. Rocket science, I don't know anything about it either. They just hired me because I'm brown. <laughs> like, I don't even know what this job is. They pay me so much money just to be here and be queer. Yeah, that's your modern tech agency. Good Lord. That's like your modern classroom. It's your modern tech agency. It's why society is collapsing in the modern day because everything is crazy. And we have companies that are literally built upon the foundation of underqualified or just straight up unqualified people. And also in our school system, 
Uh, let me see if I, I have this headline open. I thought I did. There it is from the Washington Post as well. Uh, racism in our curriculums isn't limited to history. It's in math too, guys. It's in math too. So not only are certain states just taking away bad grades from minority students because they feel that it's racially discriminatory to said students. I believe it is in Oregon that they're doing it or Washington. I can't remember which two of those liberal states, but they're basically taking away bad grades. Um, I believe it's Oregon because they say that minority students can't do as well in those classes. So it's not fair to them. So they're just not going to have like a bare minimum of what you need for math and science. And also, as we're seeing from the Washington Post, well, math and history, very racist. So we can't expect these students to be a part of that at all, which is why we now have an entire society of psychopathic, degenerate, mentally ill, anxiety ridden on 10 different big pharma medications, adults who are being hired for their job, not because of their qualification, but because of their race or their gender or sexuality. Take your pick. And again, just final example of this uh, time named their athlete of the year, and they gave it to none other than Simone Biles, the Olympic athlete who decided not to compete because of her mental health problems. So this is who we prop up in society. This is the modern day hero. Those who instead of you know, when they're having a hard time, they push through and they say, you know what, I'm not going to let what is going on in my personal life get me down. I'm going to use this weakness, turn it into strength and come out stronger than ever before and come out as a winner. No, we have people who decide to give up. And that is who is propped up in our society, because that's what our society cares about. Now they care about being weak. They care about being subservient. It's all about participation trophies. That was the gateway to our modern society now. And it's why society is completely collapsing, which is why we're seeing videos like this one uh, from the Dollar Tree, which is now Dollar 25 tree, by the way. Uh, we're making like such a bad jump here to the economy. But let's just watch this video real quick. <laughs> Dollar General employee is basically taking stickers that read a dollar twenty-five and putting them over that dollar price tag that we most commonly see from dollar stores across the nation because inflation rates are going up so much. But of course, the media always tells us that inflation rising is a good thing. And then all of the dumb people who were indoctrinated throughout their entire education will say, oh, oh. <laughs> I, well, I was taught what to think my whole life. Now that the media is telling me that inflation and a dollar twenty-five tree is actually a good thing, well, I guess it is. Amazing, yay! And we're also seeing headlines like this one come out from the soapbox: "Is criticizing Joe Biden a danger to democracy?" As concerns mount over the future of free and fair elections, a debate has broken out about whether the media must protect Biden to save the republic. Now, the first thing that I thought when I read this was, "Isn't this how most authoritarian governments start?" Isn't this how most dictators come to power? You're not allowed to criticize them. And if you do, you get killed or disappeared or silenced in some way. But we now have media because while this soapbox, I don't know, website is small, I've never heard of them before. While they may be small in a small subset of society, the fact that we have headlines like this at all is baffling to me. And what is more baffling is that most likely... Actually, not most likely. Let me rephrase that. The media is already taking this concept and bringing this theory into reality with their coverage of the news every single day, which is why, like I just said, we are seeing CNBC saying why inflation is a good thing. We're seeing Business Insider. Well, empty grocery shelves just means we need to live like the Europeans a little bit, guys. Come on, don't be greedy. Americans have way too much stuff. We just need to learn how to minimize, okay? Be a little bit more minimalistic. It's good for everybody. Yeah, that's what we're all currently living through. Ay, ay, ay. Now let's move on to other news because while our society continues to degrade before our very eyes, it's a very sad thing to see, we do get small pearls of truth that do occasionally make their way to the surface, you know, buried underneath all of the lies and confusion that's constantly being thrown in our face. For example, one of those truths that has since come to light from Insider Paper 
Facebook asserts in a court filing that fact checks created by third party organizations and used to remove content or to suspend users are nothing more than protected opinions. That's right, guys. If your Facebook has been deleted or you've been fact checked because you spread misinformation, well, that was just that fact checkers, that fact checkers opinion. Meta platforms, formerly known as Facebook, have admitted in a court filing that its fact checks are merely protected opinions. The court filing was entered in response to a lawsuit filed by the libertarian pundit John Stossel, who claimed that one of Facebook's fact checks inserted on a video defamed him and was misleading. In response, Facebook argued that the so-called fact check was actually an opinion rather than an actual check and statement of the facts. Opinions are protected from libel accusations, releasing the person or entity that made the statements from liability. On the other hand, statements labeled as fact make the person or entity making them subject to a libel lawsuit for defamation. Whatever decision is made by the court, the filing and the lawsuit are a public relations disaster, of course, from meta platforms. The statement in the court filing, the so-called fact checks are nothing but protected opinions, places Facebook in a precarious position. So, of course, they would immediately come out and be like, well, it's actually just an opinion. And of course it is. Of course it's an opinion. Anybody with a brain, anybody with just one IQ point would be able to know that any of these fact checks on any platform, not just Facebook, are an opinion because none of these fact checkers are based in actual facts or science. Their fact checks in themselves are ridiculous. They'll be like, fact check on a video of, it'll be like, Joe Biden says the sky is green. And it's a video of Joe Biden. Yeah, the sky is green. And the fact checkers will be like, um, actually, Joe Biden did say the sky is green. But what he actually meant is that sometimes because of the hue of his glasses or, you know, if he doesn't take the proper medications, this guy can look green to him. And that's your average fact checker on any subject, okay? And that was just a dumb example, but there are fact checks in regard to COVID news, economy news, mostly COVID and vaccine news, because, you know, you're not allowed to talk about facts and science when it comes to actual facts and science that is dictating the entire movement of our country and world just based on an opinion friends just based on an opinion <sighs> yeah yeah what a freaking life we hate to see it we really do and let's move on from that too because on top of that news coming out we also have abortion back in the headlines as well um we went over the most recent case that SCOTUS was hearing and uh, Ayanna Presley came out in regard to abortion and it being health care and her commentary on it. This is what she had to say. These courts have proven time and time again that they are not on the side of the people. In fact, they are against the will of the people. This is settled law. A majority of Americans do not want to see Roe v. Wade overturned. Abortion care is health care. When we have these bans, it doesn't mean that people stop having abortions. It just means they stop doing it safely and legally. And so this is quite literally a matter of life and death. Yes, Ayanna Presley, this is quite literally a matter of life and death because we are dealing with life and death, not the life and death of the woman that's trying to murder her innocent child in the womb, but the life or death of said innocent child. I hate when leftists try to say, oh, it's just a fetus in the womb. The life and death is only attributed to the woman who's making the decision. No, the real life and death decision is for that innocent child in the womb who's not allowed to make any decision regarding their body pro-abortion people like to say my body my choice well that's not your body so therefore by saying my body my choice you're going against the choice of the body within your body so yeah you're actually right ayana presley it is a matter of life and death but not for these women and if they're going about getting an abortion in an illegal and unsafe way and they die from it well, they were trying to murder someone and got murdered in the process. Maybe that's just cruel, cruel karma. I don't know. Now, Kamala Harris, of course, had to elevate this rhetoric. And she said in an interview with The Chronicle, I don't mean to sound alarmist. I mean this. Women will die. And she said this in response to the grave consequences if the Supreme Court overturned Roe v. Wade. Women will die. And all I would say to that is if women die because Roe v. Wade is overturned, that will be that own woman's fault. 
because that woman decided to put herself through a procedure that was life-threatening that led her to die. That's like saying, I'm not even going to make analogies on this, actually. That's just that woman made that decision. And if she died from that decision, then that's on her. If that's a very blunt and mean way to look at that, well, and don't as well for anybody who may be a little bit more progressive or liberal listening to my show say, well, what about rape victims? I can show you for every woman who screams, what about the rape victims? An actual rape victim who had their child and said that that child was the light of their life and that if they ever aborted them, they would have known that they were doing an egregious moral wrong by murdering an innocent child that did come out of a bad circumstance. Also, those percentage of abortions are so rare and minimal and you can look to TikTok, you can look to the tweets of women who wear the big abortion earrings and wear the ab abortion is healthcare shirts and go and scream about abortion in the streets. They're using abortion as a contraceptive. They're not all rape victims out there. They're just using it because they want to be free and liberated like men and they just want to be able to have sex with no consequence. Okay, if you want to do that, then have protected sex. And if you have sex and you face the consequence if you want to see it that way of becoming pregnant. That's on you, fam. So don't mur murder the innocent child in the womb because you're a slut. That's all I have to say about that. We're moving on. Now, of course, the left only cares about lives when it comes to women who can die because they choose to have an illegal abortion. What we aren't going to hear from Democrats or liberal media is stories like this one. Bill Mnuchin of Fox News says, breaking, two innocent people are dead after a human smuggler being pursued by law enforcement ran a stop sign and T-boned the victims. It was a car in Mission, Texas. It was an 18-year-old smuggler and six migrants who were in custody. Victims' families were being notified with charges pending. This happened two days ago. And an update, the two innocent civilians who were killed when a human smuggler crashed into their vehicle were a local mother and daughter from Mission, Texas, age 59 and 22, law enforcement sources said. So, of course, we see so many of these Democrats and liberals who are advocates for life and for women. What about these two women who were brutally murdered by illegal immigrants who shouldn't have been in this country? Are you going to stand up for them? Are you going to stand up for their right to choice? Do you think that they wanted to choose to die? No. They were killed by illegals because our border's out of control because of policies that, again, Democrats push. But we're not going to hear that story anywhere. No. All we're going to hear is fat women screeching about abortion and about how it's a good thing, about how it's health care. It's not health care. And I've seen so many videos of women who say they've gotten abortion and they're all mentally messed up because of it because no one told them what it actually was until it was too late, or they found out later on and they said, wow, I murdered an, in an innocent child. I was watching this TikTok the other day of this woman who said she got an abortion. I'll see if I can find it and I'll play it on another episode. She said she got an abortion and she basically lays out her whole story about how nine years ago she had gotten the abortion and she's crying in the video saying, my, ch my child would have been nine years old. I took away a soul. I took away a life. I took away someone's dreams and hopes and aspirations and I had no right to do it. And she's crying in the video. That's the reality of abortion. You never hear the stories about women who take abortion pills and they're bleeding out on their bathroom floors. They have to go to the hospital or botched abortions that, you know, the same safe and legal ones that Ayanna Presley's pushing. They get botched abortions and then they're bleeding out. They're messed up. They can't have kids for the rest of their life. Nobody wants to talk about those stories. Now, moving on from the abortion topic, let's get into still kind of along the same lines here, health, wellness. This came out from Bloomberg. Bayer's bid to end Roundup cancer suits leads Supreme Court to ask Biden for input. The U.S. Supreme Court signaled interest in Bayer AG's bid to stop thousands of claims that its top-selling Roundup weed killer causes cancer, asking the Biden administration for advice on whether to hear the company's appeal and potentially a multi-billion dollar case. Now, I didn't have very much time before this episode, or I would have shown you all of the stories and people's medical, what's the word I'm looking for here, experiences, what they've gone through, being tied to Roundup, to Monsanto, to all of these chemicals and how it has led to various cancers in people. 
I didn't have time to put all of that together for you, but please go look into Roundup causing cancer. Go look into Monsanto and that entire company and all of the chemicals that are linked to these cancers. Now, Bayer is challenging a $25 million award to Edwin Hart Hardman, a California man who says decades of exposure to Roundup caused his non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. Bayer argues that federal approval of Roundup's label meant Hardman's suit and others like it couldn't go forward. And um, Bayer is the owner of Roundup, but I mentioned Monsanto because they're another company who have been hit with lawsuits similar to this. So just go look into all of this as a whole. Uh, the litigation is a test case for what Ultimately, could be tens of thousands of claims in July. Bayer said a Supreme Court ruling in its favor would effectively and largely end U.S. Roundup litigation, while at the same time setting aside $4.5 billion in case the court rejected the appeal. All told, Bayer has pledged more than $16 billion to fight and settle Roundup litigation. So there you guys go. You have Americans who are challenging this, saying that these chemicals that were deemed safe by our government gave them cancer, and now the Biden administration is being asked for input on this, um, on whether or not these suits can can move forward. So we'll see what happens on that front. Uh, my guess is that Joe Biden is going to shill for these big corporations, big pharma, they're all one and the same. We'll keep our eye on that one. And again, that's just further... What ends up happening with that case will just be further proof that the government does not care about our health or well-being. Like I said, we'll keep our eye on what happens with that. Now, moving into COVID news and about how the government does not care about our health or well-being. Remember this tweet from the World Health Organization from Jet back in January of 2022? Preliminary investigations conducted by the Chinese authorities have found no clear evidence of human-to-human -human transmission of the novel coronavirus identified in Wuhan, China. Now, the reason I'm bringing this up is because we have been lied to about this entire pandemic since day one. The World Health Organization was covering for China. I did a video called How China is Hiding True Coronavirus Numbers when all of this was breaking because I was already interested in news about China because I was focused in on the Hong Kong protests at that point. So when this first broke out in November of 2019 and December of 2019, I was already looking into all of this. And I saw how the World Health Organization continued to cover for China as they disappeared doctors and whistleblowers who were trying to tell the truth about what was happening. The World Health Organization, one of the many corrupt alphabet organizations who has been leading us through this pandemic, has been lying to us since the start. So just a quick refresher and reminder on that front. Now, how is our media still trying to frame COVID and face masks and social distancing? Well, let's look at Jake Tapper interviewing Amy Klobuchar, who is sitting next to a maskless Ted Cruz. And we're going to watch this video, but the basic point that I want to show you guys with this is that the media is still doing all of these jumping, like these somersault, the, this mental gymnastics to try to scare us into still wearing face masks and think that we're living through this horrifyingly deathly and terrifying time. When in reality, just listen to Jake Tapper's question to Amy Klobuchar and listen to her response. Just listen. There's something that happened uh, Friday uh, that I wanted to ask you about, if we can bring up the picture. Um, you were at the... Uh, funeral for former Senator Bob Dole, and you were seated, there's, there you are, you are seated next to a Republican Senator Ted Cruz, um, who, as everybody can see, is not masked, despite rules at the National Cathedral requiring all guests to wear masks indoors. Now, you're a breast cancer survivor. Um, you're still recovering, I guess. Uh, no, I'm 100% I'm percent. You're 100% better, better, but you're still at risk of infection because of, uh, because of this, this fight that you, you won. What was going through your mind there where Ted Cruz pulls up next to you and doesn't have a mask on, even though the rules are, please wear a mask to protect you. You wear the masks to protect other people. Mm -hmm. um, I think people should wear masks, especially when they're in settings when they're supposed to. I think part of our duty as civic leaders um, is actually to model behavior um, because it's not just about masks, it's also about vaccines. And Ted Cruz, you know, he's gotten a vaccine, he gets that. Um, and part of what I don't want to get lost here is why we were there. So Amy Klobuchar was like, okay, we were there for a funeral of Senator, I believe his name was Bob Dole. And 
the reason I wanted to play this clip is because one, Jake Tapper is sitting next to Amy Klobuchar unmasked, complaining about how Ted Cruz was sitting next to Amy Klobuchar unmasked. So that in itself is hilarious. And then number two, listen to his line of questioning. He's like, how did you feel? with Ted Cruz sitting next to you unmasked. You're a cancer survivor. You're still dealing with the symptoms. And she's like, no, I I'm fine, actually. And he's like, okay, well, well, still, how did that make you feel? So it's like he's trying to set up this entire question to make this, to make Amy the victim of Ted Cruz sitting next to her without a face mask on. And she's like, um, yeah, we were at a funeral and Ted Cruz is vaccinated. Like, let's just focus in on what we were actually there for. I'm not a fan of Amy Klobuchar, but again, in this clip, I'll give her credit where credit is due. She at least held her ground there and was like, relax, bro, chill. It would have been funnier. She was like, you're not wearing a face mask right now. I feel fine. Jake Tapper would have been like, oh, oh, oh well, I, I, uh, he would not know of how to have responded to that. But anyways, that's our media. Um, those are the same people who are trying to keep everyone scared and subservient to our government, wearing face masks forever. And there are still portions of our country that are living this way. Let's take a peek at Philadelphia and see what's going on over there. Philadelphia rolls out COVID-19 vaccination requirements for indoor dining establishments. Philadelphia has seen infection rates double in the last few weeks and hospitalizations increase by about 50%. So there you guys go. Philadelphia rolling out COVID-19 vaccination requirements for indoor dining. Absolutely ridiculous. It keeps getting worse, friends. Now, from Forbes, the Omicron variant led these companies to reconsider their return to office plans. And this article goes uh, through all of these businesses that are basically saying like in Manhattan and, you know, a lot of these blue cities, they're like, well, people can't come back to work because of Omicron and it's very serious. So we're canceling all social events, all Christmas parties, and everyone just needs to work from home again. There are still portions of our society that are living this way. It's absolutely ridiculous that in Philadelphia, you're you're going to have to show a vaccination pass to eat indoors and the government is making it to where like any establishment that sells food has to require it or they're going to face fines it's ridiculous it's stupid and it's discriminatory against the unvaccinated it really is like we are segregating people at this point and i wish that we would have the energy that many european countries that Many Australians have had who have pushed back against this and have been actively protesting for weeks on end to get their rights and liberties back to be a show of force to their government and say, no, we're not putting up with this. But no, we in America, we're just like, OK, um, I know that we we said that we're like also changing the definition of fully vaccinated. Um, and I do have three vaccines. I wasn't able to get my fourth one. Oh, I can't eat in this restaurant now. OK, that's OK. I'll just keep complying. This insanity is never going to end because Americans have decided that they don't want it to end. When Americans decide they want to be done with this, then they will be. But until they actively make that decision, until the majority of Americans say enough is enough, we will continue to live this way forever. From Yahoo News, two-dose vaccines don't include induce enough antibodies against Omicron. An Oxford University study published on Monday found that two-dose COVID-19 vaccines generate a lower antibody response against the Omicron strain, suggesting that the variant could lead to more infections among the fully vaccinated and previously infected. That's absolutely hilarious to me. So there you guys go. If you want to eat indoors in Philadelphia, make sure you get your vaccination that doesn't work and could lead you to be more infected because your antibodies, uh, you know, they don't work that well anymore. Oopsies. Sorry, guys, but keep listening to us. Keep listening to the science and uh, look to other countries as well to see what's coming to America. For example, New York Post headline, Austria to fine unvaxxed citizens over $15,000 a year. Austria will impose criminal fines of up to $15,000 a year if they refuse the COVID vaccination. The move comes amid a shift across much of Europe towards increasingly harsh measures to crack down on vaccine hesitancy amid fears Omicron patients will overwhelm hospitals. Now, key point here, fears that they will overwhelm hospitals. This is not actually happening right now. It's a fear. But because of that fear, we're going to force inject the mass population with um, an experimental vaccine that has no long-term research backing it and also is ineffective against stopping the spread of COVID. Great job. That's amazing. Pray for the Austrians who are going to be fined up to $15,000 a year. If I lived in Austria, I'd be like, great, find me. Find me for the rest of my life. I'm still not getting vaccinated. F you. It's not just in Austria that things are getting crazy. In the UK, 
COVID vaccine pass will need three doses after a reasonable time for the booster jab, their health secretary said. He said that people would need two doses and a booster to be declared fully vaccinated for travel and domestic events. People will no longer be classified as fully vaccinated unless they've had two main doses and a booster once every adult has had a reasonable amount of time to get the jab. So there you guys go. Another example of how we are again changing the definition of fully vaxxed to now include boosters, and how many boosters is enough boosters? Well, the pharma companies that are making billions of dollars off of said boosters and are having record quarterly sales, uh, they'll let you know when enough is enough, and enough is not enough yet. Maybe the 4th, 5th, 6th, 7th, 8th, 9th, 10th, I don't know. They haven't decided yet. Now, there are some other treatments that people are trying to use outside of vaccination. They you know, if they're diagnosed with COVID, would like to take other routes, for example, using ivermectin. From the Daily Wire, Virginia hospital found in contempt of court, subject to 10K per day fines after denying patient ivermectin. Chris Davies and his father Donald have been fighting for their mother and wife, Kate, Kathy Davies, right, to try the drug ivermectin as a COVID-19 treatment in Warrington, Virginia, for the past few weeks. But the hospital where Chris happens to work is a radiolo radiologic tech technologist had put his mother through a series of legal hoops seemingly designed to block the treatment from being given to her. So this is one of many examples of doctors refusing to administer, pharmacists refusing to fill ivermectin prescriptions. Uh, there's so many stories that we've read of family members on their deathbed, like, please, like, I just want to try ivermectin. If I'm on my deathbed, like, just throw it at me. Let me try it out. Doctors refusing, they end up dying. And it's heartbreaking to see. And I will leave it at that. YouTube's very restrictive on what you can say about ivermectin. But all I'll say is that if these people are on their deathbed, they should have the right to try whatever they want. Also, whether or not you're on your deathbed, you should have the right to try ivermectin if you'd like to. And this is criminal, to be quite honest. Now, I talked about what I would like to see happening in America. Something similar to this. These were protests in several Eastern German cities against COVID restrictions and compulsory vaccination. This video came out today from Magdeburg, Germany. People were chanting resistance, resistance. And as you guys can see in this video, there are thousands and thousands, tens of thousands, I would hope, but it looks like thousands of thousands in this video protesting in Germany against these COVID restrictions, against these mandates. They're really pushing back. They're speaking out because they're absolutely tired of the nonsense. And I wish we would see more of that here in America. But for some reason, we don't. For some reason, the majority is not willing to show up and show out in force because I feel like that's what it's going to take at this point is people going out in protest and getting angry and pushing back and saying enough is enough, shutting down the economy and having their voices heard. Because again, we are going to be put into a second wave of lockdowns if you're living in a blue state at least. And if you don't want to live through that, either move to a red state and then the blue states can cause their own demise and destruction as we are clearly seeing in California and New York with their crime rates. That's one of many things they're destroying themselves with. Either move to a red state or stand up and push back and take your state back. Now we're going to end the show on a positive note. Uh, we saw all of the tornadoes that ripped through Kentucky and left several people dead. It was a horrific natural disaster. My thoughts and prayers go out to everyone that was affected there. I did want to play a positive note um, about a gentleman who drove half an hour with a grill and a truckload of food and parked right in the middle of Mayfield, Kentucky to help people who have been affected. Let's watch. I know they don't have no electricity, so that means they don't have no electricity, no restaurants, no running water. So I just figure I'd do what I can do. Show up with some food and some water. So I love this video and I had to play it and end us on a positive note because there is still hope for Americans and I love to see Americans helping their fellow Americans. So take the energy from this video. It honestly just warmed my heart watching that and it made me want to go help one of my fellow Americans. So whether that's standing up for somebody who is being attacked for not wearing a face mask, whether that's opening a door for an elderly person or helping, you know, someone carry their groceries, go do something nice for your fellow American. And let's all remember that on social media, we do seem very divided. But in reality, 
And if you do go out on the streets of America, you can find common ground many times with your fellow Americans. So go help each other out. And remember that we are all fighting against one common enemy, and that is our elite, our corrupt government run by elites who want to destroy us all, keep us subservient, and take away our rights. That's all I got for you on this episode of Rapid Fire. Thank you so much for tuning in. My name is Savannah Hernandez. All right, y'all, that was my sign off for the podcast listeners. Let's get to the super chats now. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Ah, I forgot to read the podcast reviews on the show. We're going to read them right now. Okay, guys, Um, again, if you guys are just tuning in, all I want for Christmas is 300 reviews on the podcast. So please click down below, go to Apple Podcasts, and leave a five-star review if you like the show, please. Um, I'm going to start reading your guys' reviews on the show, starting off with, TTXWE, who says, since I was banned from Twitter for supporting the death penalty for a cop killer, I rely on your show for news from my favorite former followings list. Reviews are normally supposed to have com complaints, so mine is that your show should be on seven days a week, including all real and fake American holidays. Thank you, TTXWE. I appreciate it. I appreciate your review. By the way, I do read all of your guys' reviews on Apple Podcasts and all your comments here on YouTube. Second review is from Stephen Eric Thompson, yo. He says, this lady has a passion and a drive that this world needs now more than ever. After going into the danger zone to capture the reality of BLM riots and patriotic Trump supporters, then getting banned from Twitter because the president shared her footage, Savannah Hernandez hasn't given up. She's not just bold enough to hold up a Please Lives Matter sign next to a BLM protest or to remove signs telling people an outdoor public park is closed due to COVID. She'll blast woke lives with the truth about white guilt until they twerk at her feet. That has happened before. I am forgetting my whole life. Thank you, guys. You know what? My entire career was deleted, and I forgot I did all this stuff. Uh, thank you, Stephen Eric Thomas Yo, for reminding me. He said, this girl will not be silenced no matter how hard the love tries to shut her down. Tune in for every episode of Rapid Fire to hear the things the mainstream media doesn't want you to hear. Though, if you settle for audio only, you're missing out. That's all I'm saying. Thank you guys so much for the reviews. I appreciate it. I will start reading two reviews per show. Please go leave a review on Apple Podcasts. I read every single one, and I would absolutely love Getting up to 300 reviews by Christmas. Help me out, guys. All right, let's get to your super chats. Again, thank you all so much for tuning in. I really do enjoy our time together. Also, I will be traveling for a funeral this week. So this is the second episode of this week. I will potentially try to give you guys a third. Uh, but as of now, this is the second episode for the week. I did a, a live stream last night. If you guys missed that one, go check it out. We talked about CNN pedos. and. Um, yeah, I won't be able to give you guys too many updates because I will be traveling and, um, you know, spending time with my family during this time. First super chat comes from Heidi K. Next to Salty, you're my favorite. Stay badass. Thank you, Heidi. I appreciate it. I really do. There's always Salty Army in my chat. And I have a confession, guys. I, I've never watched a Salty video and I feel like I need to because y'all hype up Salty so much. So I got to go watch Salty. Not Chili Boo Boo says, Stinky Joe Biden. <laughs> True. Wombat Spew says, surely if government didn't subsidize terror ter education, then universities would have to offer their courses at more affordable and competitive prices. No? Potentially. Potentially. Yeah, there are so many different aspects to university and just them pulling money out of students' pockets and taking advantage of them. To combat that, I would just say you don't need a college degree to get a job in many fields. You can go to a trade school or a, you know, school that is focused in on what you want to do. Justin Brown Conservative says, Merry Christmas, Sav, to you and yours. Thank you. Thank you so much. Merry Christmas, guys. Merry Christmas. Richard Harmier says, nothing. He just sent in a super chat. Thank you, Richard. I appreciate it. Not Chili Boo Boo. These teachers must have done too much LSD in college. <laughs> Probably. Fun fact, did you guys know that LSD was brought to America by the CIA when they were conducting their MK Ultra experiments? I'm coming out with a special edited video for you guys. I'm very excited for it. It's called This is Why I Don't Trust the Government. And I'm going to be going over Operation Northwoods, MK Ultra, the Tuskegee experiment, um, Vietnam, the Gulf of Tonkin, how we were lied into the Vietnam War, and then MK Ultra as well. So you guys are going to want to tune into that. That will be launching this week. So keep your eyes peeled. I don't know what day yet. Gerardo Cantu says, talk about sex in the workplace violates OSHA and other state federal regulations. It also violates school policies regarding sexual harassment. Yeah, Gerardo, like I said, it's weird that these teachers are talking about their sexuality at all to their students, but I guess that's just a normalcy now. Sienna says, please don't stop. Look into the Pandora Papers. 
I love when you guys tell me to look things up. I'm going to add that to the list of things I need to see, to read into. Chris Bosco, I bought a bunch of the incognito masks from Fake Mask Worldwide. I gave them out to a bunch of my anti-mask coworkers. None of us were, will ever wear a normal mask again. I love it, Chris, but try not wearing a mask at all. If there's enough coworkers, revolt, my guy, revolt. Our Bracewell 21 says, when I come to the area, I'd love to meet you. Dinner and drinks on the wife and I. Oh, thank you, our Bracewell. I appreciate it. I really do. You guys are awesome. I appreciate all the supporters. Max Damper. Hey, Sav. Just found out my company is sending spoiled or, hang on, let me see, spoiled or closed. Wait, where did that go? Sorry. Or close to expire date food to keep the shelf full. But it's in my area so far. Oh, okay, I see what you're saying there. They're keeping spoiled food or expired food on the shelf to keep shelves full. Where are you at, Max Stamper? You don't have to send me a super chat. Just write in the chat and I'll see. Um, that's interesting. If that's really happening, keep me updated. I'll keep my eyes peeled for news stories on that. Freedom says, these people are drones, soft-headed groupies. Very true, Freedom. Very true. John K, love your podcast on seed oils. For more insight on that and the obesity epidemic, please watch the documentary movie Fathead. Hmm. I will put that on the list of things to watch over my Christmas break because usually a break for me means how many things can I research since I have so much free time now. I will watch that. Sienna says, let abortion be federally legal, then child support is illegal. Interesting concept. Kevin Waite, Savannah, thank you for your reporting and all. And don't you feel that we have had about three orders of magnitude more reason for revolution in some form than our founders? How long will we keep this up, Kevin? I don't know. I don't know when enough is going to be enough for the American people. But as of now, it's going to take a lot more for them to actually stand up and push back. Demizzi626 sent in a super sticker. Thank you, Demizzi. King Salmonfish says, number of sick people I have seen this entire time, zero. Number of videos I have seen of sick people, zero on the internet. Status, I'm not reading the last part, but very true, King Salmonfish. You know, the, the number of people that I've seen sick as well. I mean, I've known people who have gotten sick for sure. Um, and usually we don't see sick people because they're at home, you know, recovering. But I've heard so many stories and I've known people who've gotten COVID and they've recovered and they've been fine. I don't know anybody who's died from COVID to this day. Captain Cook says, my clown pill suppository was rough today. Thanks for bringing the lube, Sav. You're welcome, Captain Cook. Thanks for tuning in. TJ says, I'm totally late, but here you go. Sorry for your loss. I heard about your uncle. No worries, TJ. Thank you so much for always contributing to the show. And um, thank you guys for the condolences. I appreciate it. My uncle was one of my biggest fans. He's been following me since the start of my career when I was back at InfoWars. And I miss him so much. He used to watch every single one of my podcasts. He was my biggest fan. And I, I miss him a lot. I really do. So, um, I'm, I'm excited to go and celebrate his life and who he was and what a great father and uncle and person that he was. So it, it, it will be good. It will, we'll find the good out of the situation. Not Chili Boo Boo says, remember when they said, just make a new social media. Should we just make our own hospitals, airports, restaurants, and governments at this point? Yes, let's secede. Let's make our own country. I am not opposed to that in the slightest. Anna Rodriguez says, it's the beautiful Sav Hernandez. Thanks for doing this type of work because it makes me feel like I'm not alone with all the craziness happening. Thank you, Anna. I appreciate it. Also, you did not have to send the super chat to correct what you wrote. I I will, I will got you guys. I know sometimes you guys make typos in your super chats. I'll correct them for you. No worries. Thank you, Anna. I appreciate you tuning in. Um, and thank you guys so much too for just always being Tuning into the broadcast, liking, sharing, subscribing, keeping me going. You guys are awesome. I appreciate you. Uh, last super chat of the night comes from Wombats Pew in Australia. Seven of eight of our states are like New York and LA. I'm backslocked out of most places. Don't let it get like this. Screw masks. You know, one thing that I have seen from New Yorkers is they, they keep going to restaurants or food courts that are only for the vaccinated and the unvaccinated will go and they'll do like a sit-in and I think that's awesome and more people need to do that type of stuff. I honestly really like, I would love to, I don't know which airline I want to get banned from because I know I'm probably going to get banned if I do this, but I would love to protest an airline and just, you know, like shut down a whole plane and be like, let everyone on the plane, take off your mask. And if all of us take off the mask, what if they don't land the plane? What if they're like, okay, whatever. And then, you know, we inspire more people to do that and more people. And then everyone starts taking their masks off. I think that'd be great. Anyways, guys, 
I'm done for the night. This is our second episode for the week. You may not be hearing from me uh, anymore this week because I will be traveling, but I will be at AmpFest in Arizona this weekend. Um, me and Elijah will be there. We'll have an, a slightly offensive booth. So if you'd like to come meet me in person or if you'd like to come meet Elijah and check us out and talk with us, we will be in Arizona for AmpFest this Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. So come and check it out. Hopefully I'll see you guys there. Thank you guys so much for tuning in and contributing. TJ sends in one more super chat. He says, Philly is going the way of New York City. I need to get the F out immediately. Stupid Vax passes. TJ, you know, I, I don't know if you, you uh, saw that I covered that story about Philly. Yeah, Vax passes, vaccination status if you want to eat indoors. Absolutely ridiculous. Anyway, guys, thank you guys so much for tuning in. I appreciate y'all, and I will see you guys either later this week or sometime next week. Appreciate y'all.